So today we're doing section, starting with section 3.1, which is atomic mass. And this is the mass of an atom in AMUs, atomic mass units. They're not grams or anything. It's a mass unit, and they're just called atomic mass units. And we have a definition that exactly one atomic mass unit, I wrote 1.0000, but that's zeros repeating forever. One atomic mass unit is defined as one twelfth the mass of a carbon-12 atom. And you're going to get to fill this in once I figure out how to. There we go. Um, the average atomic mass, whenever you see a box, you should fill it in. Um, the average atomic mass, that's what we see on the periodic table, those numbers that are not the whole numbers. So these numbers that you would see on the periodic table like these. Um, the average atomic mass is the weighted average mass of the naturally occurring mixture of isotopes of each element. And we'll be doing more work on isotopes um, in class. So these little pie charts here show you the atomic masses, sorry, the different isotopes for each element, the known isotopes. So cobalt, for instance, only has one isotope with a mass number of 59. Iron, on the other hand, has one, two, three, four stable isotopes with mass numbers of, it looks like 54, 56, 57, I think that, I don't know what that number is, 55. But it's just to give you an idea, different elements have different numbers of isotopes. But cobalt has only one stable isotope. Some can have two, some can have a lot more. Nickel has five, zinc has five. The red means it's a radioactive isotope. Okay, and we use something called the mass spec to get the actual mass of each isotope and what percent is present of each isotope. I'm going to move forward a little bit. This is an example of mass spec data right here. This is a mass spec data set for zirconium. So this information would tell you that zirconium has, let's see, that you can fill this out. We'll go back to the other sheet. So you count the peaks to figure out how many there are, and you can fill that in. It has five stable isotopes, one, two, three, four, five. And then the natural abundance of each isotope comes out on the information from a mass spec. So here's some data, all derived from a mass spec. And you're going to figure out how to get the unknowns in here. So let's do some examples. So first off, a weighted average. When we talk about the weighted average, is the atomic average atomic mass is the weighted average mass of all the isotopes. And when you do a weighted average, you take the percent of each isotope, multiply it by its mass, and then you add those all together. And note that the percent abundance of each isotope, when you add it up for a single element, should add up to 100. So this box is really easy to fill in right here because right here we're given that this is 75.53 so the other one you just subtract from 100 to get 24.47 you can fill that in okay now to get the average atomic mass I have those all covered up that should all be covered up um, for chlorine we would just do this number times its mass divided by 100 because when you have percent you, know, you have to divide by 100 to convert it to decimal so there we go and we add this percent times its mass right here and you get 35.5 atomic mass units okay so let's do lithium now so for lithium we know I need the data the percent abundances must add to 100. You can try this on your own and pause right now. I'm going to do lithium. You can fill lithium. We're going to do lithium and potassium in this space right here. Um, so lithium, these two percents must add to 100. So I could call this x, and this would be 100 minus x. So again, solve this on your own if you want to do it. Go ahead and pause. But I'd have x times the mass, so percent x divided by 100 times the mass plus the other isotope, 100 minus x 
quantity over 100 times this mass, and that total must add up to 6.941. Or, in other words, there we go. There's the equation. And we have to solve that for x. And you should solve that for x yourself. Um, you should actually do the mathematics to solve for x to make sure you could figure that out, and you get these percentages. Okay. Now, potassium. It, potassium is the same exact method as chlorine, but now we have three isotopes. So you would just do this mass times it. Sorry, this mass times its percent over 100 plus this mass times its percent over 100 plus this mass times its percent over 100 to get this answer here. You should pause and do that yourself. I'm about to show you the answers. You get 39.1 atomic mass units. Okay. We talked about this already. Now, I'm sorry, I'm going to go somewhere else. We're going to Avogadro's number, molar mass. So, there's a blank over here that you're going to fill in. The word mole. The word mole is a special word in chemistry. You will hear it all the time. It just means a number. And look at that. We're at like 6.26 minutes, and the number is close to 6, but not 0.22. It's, it's a little different. You're going to fill this in. But words like, you know, we hear dozen. One dozen equals 12 things. One pair of things equals two things. A trio of things. Why do I have 12? A trio is three things. Score. Did you know score means 20? Four score and 20 years ago is 100 years ago. A Google means 10 to the 100th. So if I had a Google eggs, I'd have 10 to the 100th eggs. If I had a score of eggs, I'd have 20 eggs. If I had a mole of eggs, it means I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd eggs. Very important number. And where does this number Okay, where does this number come from? It comes from the mass of a carbon atom. And here we go. It's the number of carbon 12 atoms. When we write this, it's the isotope of carbon with a mass number of 12. So it's the number of carbon 12 atoms and exactly 12.000000 repeating grams of carbon 12. Okay, and it turns out that this number is, you know it already, you could even fill this in on your own, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, write that number out in non-scientific notation. You can follow this here, but here we go. It's a really big number. <laughs> 6022, oh, 20 times. Okay called Avogadro's number. It's in honor of a famous scientist, Amadeus Avogadro, who lived in the late 1700s through mid-1800s. Now, we can talk about atomic masses. That's what we learned about earlier. And we talk about atomic mass. We just write the units as AMU. Molar mass is exactly the same thing as atomic mass, but different units. So we look up the atomic mass here, 55.845. Atomic mass units, AMUs per atom of iron. The molar mass of iron is just the same number, and that's the number of grams in one mole. So if we looked up zinc, we would look up zinc. Do we have zinc on this table right here? Yep. It's 65.38. AMUs per atom, or 65.38 grams per mole. Grams per mole of zinc. And how about chlorine? You can look it up on your own periodic table in the book. Look it up and put it here. The molar mass, when we say molar, we have to talk about grams. It's the number on the periodic table, but the units are in grams, and that's per mole per mole, and we should have this in per mole, grams per mole. Now, molecular mass. Now, we're going to talk about molecules. We just add up all the atomic masses of all the atoms in the molecule. And because we're talking about a single molecule, not a mole, 
if someone asks for the molecular mass, we write our units as AMUs, atomic mass units. So here's an example. Find the molecular mass of H2O. So you should pause and look up the values for H and the values for O. You'll add two H's plus one O. I'm about to show you, so pause. There you go. Two H's and one O. We look up H. H is 1.01. .01. Multiply by two and add that to 16. We get 18.2 AMUs per molecule of water or per molecule of H2O. You should do this now for urea. Now, this little two here means we have two of what's inside. So you'd have, you can pause and do this on your own and you can listen. You have two N's plus two times two plus four H's plus a carbon plus an oxygen. Look up all those values, do this on your own, pause. I'm about to show you the answer, but you should really pause and do this on your own. Pause. And just check your work. There's the answer. 66 AMUs. Now, if you're asked for a molar mass as opposed to a molecular mass, you use the same exact process. You just add up like this. But what are your units? What are your units if we have a mole? The units are grams per mole. Oh, by the way, you'll see MOL instead of MOLE. That's the abbreviation for mole. You get to drop the L. So for molar mass, it's grams per mole instead of what? Fill it in. Instead of AMUs per molecule. Or they become grams instead of AMUs. OK, now converting between grams, moles, molecules, and atoms. This is a song we will sing it in class. I'm not going to sing it for you online. <laughs> But these are the basic tenets. If you want to convert grams to moles or moles to grams, we use molar mass. That's that number we calculate off the periodic table. If we want to go moles to molecules or molecules to moles, we'll use Avogadro's number, that's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. We're not going to worry about these last two for now. So I'll show you how to do this first one. So grams water to molecules of water. So we see it's grams to moles and then moles to molecules. So here we have grams to moles, moles to molecules. And then we just, I'm about to show you this. So we start with our grams of water. And we use molar mass. That's the number of grams in one mole. And we have to always, this is the conversions. This is why we learned conversions, because we're just converting. So we go from grams, grams to moles. And now we need to go from moles to molecules. In one mole, there's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. And here's our answer. OK. You could try this next one on your own, or you could watch. But just look at the song. We want to go from molecules all the way to grams. So we'll go molecules, nope, not to atoms. We want to get all the way to grams. So we'll go molecules to moles using Avogadro's number right here. And then we'll go moles to grams using the molar mass. That's that number that you added all the atoms together to get the total molar mass for the molecule. OK, so you should have paused if you didn't want to just copy. And you should really be trying these on your own, not just copying. So we start with our molecules that we're given, because we were given a number of molecules. And then we have to convert molecules to moles. And it's Avogadro's number of molecules in one mole. And then we can go moles to grams according to the song. In one mole, there's 28 grams of N2. And why did I write this as 0.11? Sig figs. There's only two sig figs here, so I have to round to the correct number of sig figs. OK. So next section is percent composition, and this is defined as the percent by mass of each element in a compound. These are really easy. An example problem, we're going to calculate the mass of each element in water separately. And you divide the mass of each element by the total molar mass multiplied by 100. Um, you should be able to do this on your own. So water, 2 H's is 2.02, .02, divide by the total of water, which is 18. Get a number, multiply by 100. You could pause and do this. Here's your answer if you didn't feel like pausing. 
very simple. Note that these percents must add up to 100, so if you calculate one of them, you actually don't have to do this calculation for the other, you could just subtract this from 100 to get the other one. All right, empirical formula. All right, determining empirical formulas. And we learned a bit earlier, you might have forgotten, that's okay. An empirical formula is a simplified formula, so if there's a common factor in the subscripts, we divide by that common factor to get an empirical formula. And we can find an empirical formula from given data. You can go ahead and read through this. Um, we're just going to go straight to the examples. You're given this information, and if you're given percents, first thing you just rewrite them as grams. If you're given grams, you just start with your grams. So you just write, rewrite all of your percents as grams. Very simple. Now, we have to convert each gram to mole. We just learned about how to go gram to mole. Gram to mole, use molar mass. So do that, pause this, convert each of these to, molar ma to, to moles using the molar mass. I'm, you should pause and do that on your own. And I'm deleting, I'm opening this up now. You should be pausing. Okay, so you should have gotten these numbers. Hopefully that's what you got. And the next step is you divide the moles of all of the elements by the smallest number of moles. These are just directions. This is what you do. So you can do that on your own right now. Figure out which of these is the smallest and divide all three of these by the smallest number of moles. Um, you should pause and do it on your own, but here are the answers. Okay. We get a 1, 1.999, and a 1. This is basically 2. If you get a number really close to a whole number, you just write it as the whole number has to be within 0.05 of a whole number. And the last step, you write these numbers as the subscript. So you should be able to do that on your own again. So pause and write it on your own, and here is your answer. There you go. This can get a little tricky. Sometimes when you do your division, you don't get whole numbers here. Oh, that's coming a little later. I'm jumping the gun. Sometimes you're given grams. <laughs> if you're given grams directly, you just go straight to moles. You don't have to do that step one. So I want you to figure out how to do steps two and three in, on your own. Step two is convert these both to moles. Step three is divide whatever answers you got in step two, divide by the smallest number. And pause and do those calculations. There's your answers. And now this one's a little tricky. This is what I was talking about. Sometimes you don't get a whole number. And if you don't get a whole number, you have to figure out what you multiply by to get a whole number. So in this instance, we think 2 and a half. What do we multiply 2 and a half by to get a whole number? We multiply it by 2. So we will put these as subscripts, but multiply the subscripts by 2 to get N205. And then there's some notes here about if you get other fractions or other decimals. Uh, 0.25, you'd multiply by 4. 0.33 or 0.6, you multiply by 3. Last thing, molecular formulas. These are the actual formulas. Again, you just follow some steps. They're very straightforward. First, you find the molar mass of the empirical formula. So here's our empirical formula. You should be able to figure that out. Use your periodic table. It's in your book that you have. Or go to the web and look it up. But you use the molar mass that you have from a periodic table. They're all over the web. You just look up periodic table image. You'll find the mass of each of these elements. Do that. You should pause. Here's the answer. Okay. Molar mass, 30.03. And we were given the molar mass of the actual formula. You divide the molar mass of the actual <coughs> formula by the molar mass of the empirical formula. Do that. 180 over 30. Here's the answer. You should pause. You get 6. Last thing, you just multiply all the subscripts of the empirical formula by the number you got here. So we'll multiply all of these by 6. You should do that on your own, but here's the answer. C6H12O6. Here's another example. Do it on your own. Pause this, and I'm about to show you the answer. Just do steps 1, 2, and 3 on your own. And here's the answer. There you go. And have fun.